Hello everybody, my name is John OTB. I'm a music producer based in Boya. This is my studio session. I'll walk you through on how I made a beat for that life. as a track on the EP I did with crowns on Skynet. Okay, without wasting your time, let's move right into it. I'll just run you through on how the, the beat was made, but before that, I, I will actually play the beat so that you can actually hear how it sounds like. Okay, that was it but uh, for the beat I started the beat with a sample actually because sometimes you might sometimes you might actually uh, pull out the sample and then it sounds good but one thing with samples is that like when you get the sample I get my samples from Looperman yeah, they have free samples they're relatively free mm, sometimes you might get a sample and then the sample it's so dope, but you see like thousands of download under the sample, and then if you use the sample like that, it's not going to sound great, or maybe it will sound like some other person's beat, because many people have downloaded the sample, and then a lot of people are using the sample. So I took the sample and I resampled it. So I just carried the sample and I dropped into the fruity slicer. It was just a short sample. Then I played it back. Uh, to my taste, what I really wanted, and this is what I came out with. The sound, I changed the pitch and I played it back. That's what that that's what I got from playing it back. But actually, this is not what I played, and then it was not like this initially. I played something different. I actually had to use gross beat to, 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 to make it sound that way. So I, what I played came out like this. This, to me, it was not sounding dope, so I added a uh, gross beat, gross beat to it. Uh, I use half time. I use gross beat, and then I use half time, and then I'm half timing, and then I actually uh, limited the half timing to half of the half time, so it gives a melody like this. That was the lead melody of the. Of the of the of the song already. Then uh, there was another. What I added now from this, I added um, uh, a line, a line, a line, a line of a lead. There's one lead I use from Nexus, and this what it was. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually a dope, it's, it's like it's like a thermin, yeah, it's dope. And then I used um, another plugin, and it's a default plugin from FL Studio, Sakura. And I added just a few things to spice up the beat more because I, I, I was not thinking, I did not think that the beat needed a lot of instruments. So I used practically very few instruments, so I added this to it. That's from Sakura. So if you combine the 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 three the three um, uh, instruments, it will sound like this. Yeah, it's pretty dope. So the thing is, like, you don't need a lot of when you use a sample, you don't need a lot of uh, instruments to make the beat sound dope. You can use like only a few instruments and then the beat is still dope, like this one, this is the melody. But I still needed something from um from the from the from from the 
I, I thought the beat lacked something, so I, re I recorded a few, a few vocals. I, rec I recorded a few vocals and added them into, into the beat, so that it, it, like I just wanted it to sound. It. So I recorded something like ooh, 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 and then it the what the result was something like, like like this. Yeah, and then another one was uh, I recorded two samples. Another one was just like <laughs> because to me it was just too normal and I needed something to just make the beat very crazy. So I added something to it like there's another sample I added. It sounded like this. Yeah, I drown like I, I actually drown all the samples in a large reverb, whole reverb, so that they can actually sound nice. Uh, the if you blend the melody now with the samples, uh, the, the the melody with the samples I recorded, it will actually give something like this. Okay, that's pretty dope. Uh, the drums. Let me go to the the drums. The drums. Uh, for the drums. Mm, a lot of people think like alternating drums and then anyway let me not talk about it. a lot of people i like groove i don't want to be listening to a song and then i have a particular groove. i'm nodding my head then at a particular place i have to nod my head like this it's supposed to be smooth like if i'm bouncing like this let me bounce like this to the end of the song if i'm jumping like this let me jump like this so that's the technique i use for my drums i make the drums actually flow in a particular direction i don't like to twist it too much because uh, songs now are mostly vibes, not to showcase how you can manipulate beats, play with beats or whatever. So, uh, for the kick drum, I used a kick that is delayed. If you check here, the, uh, the, uh, the sample, the kick sample is delayed. So, I, it's from a portal drum kick. That's from Splice. This is how, this how the kick sounds like if I play. It delays a little bit. It's not. It's not. There's a little bit of delay before it starts. So when you then I added um, one eight eight from another drum kit, Palace uh, Palace kit, and then when you combine it with the drums, I made the eight oh eight short because the beat. I don't think the beat needs a, 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 a like a long eight oh eight. So when you combine it with a with a kick, it gives something like a delay drop. Like you really feel the delay when they add the when they add the 808. You feel the delay of the kick when they add the 808. So you you you, you feel like the kick is actually dropping a little bit. It's, it gives a saucy. I don't know how I can call it, but it's very saucy. It makes it makes uh, the trap sound a little bit out of normal, but in a groovy way. So I I did not do much with the 808. The 808 line was just. It was just a single line and alternated a few and then the last part of the the 808 this is what i did with because just to increase the bounce it's just like it can be different it'd it be different and then i added um my snare yeah uh, most i use the port from still the portal drum kit and you know, something like this Yeah, then I've, uh, then I added a, uh, like a percussion, still from the portal drum kit. I did not add too much. I added like two percussions, and then this is how they sounded. Like this particular one here, this shape is a, it's a short vocal sample I cut and used. It's just, it's, it's, it's really small, but it gives, it gives a particular sound to it. And then uh, I used uh, expand. There was another melody from expand, but this comes in around the hook, the hook part. Let me say, and it sounds like this. It's like a choir. I use it like I use it like sometimes. I use it to just fill in the the space when the chorus is coming. It should make it huge. 
I use it like a pad, but it's a choir from Expand 2. Then uh, you have uh, you have the hi hats. One thing I do is like I play with my hi hats a lot. The hi hats you can actually you can actually see a lot of things done with the hi hats from here, and this is how you play that. Hey, it shouldn't sound normal, so I actually played with adjusted the velocities and all that. And when you actually combine all the drums, the drums, they will sound like this. Yeah, that's already enough sauce for you to flow on it. So now it needs melody to make it a good and dope sub beat, right? about here this was the drum line and that is how i made the beat because i don't like too many instruments on my beat you might get the beat and you think i've used a lot of instruments but i used only a, a few instruments like you can see i used uh, like 12 instruments to make the beat for that life so the whole the whole beat when you combine with the melody combine with the melody and the sample it comes out like this It's, it's really, I don't know how to, to describe the beat actually, but it's just incredible because uh, it, was, it was like a challenge for me because I had to use only a few instruments and then bring out something dope. So I had to think out of the box in order for the beat to, to sound to sound the way I wanted. So I limited myself to a few instruments and then tried to think out of the box and that actually brings out a lot of creativity in you. Uh, you you don't just mix instruments because you 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 have uh, synthesizers and then uh, a lot of instruments to use that just crowds the beat and then what you you need to get out of the beat first of all i have an idea that um that's my own personal idea that an artist actually completes a beat i don't do a beat for you to listen and enjoy. I do a bit for an artist to be able to sing on. And a lot of people forget to actually do that. They don't create space for an artist to sing. They do a bit they can enjoy, but an artist cannot sing on it. And I've been doing this shit for a while, so I actually know how it is when an artist is trying to drop on a beat and then there are a lot of instruments uh, actually disturbing him or her. Uh, there were certain times I actually did beats and then when an artist is recording, I had to remove some instruments for the artist to be able to record. So I limit my beat making to just a few instruments and I try to create with a few instruments and allow space for the artist to be able to express uh, himself or herself on the, on, on, on the beat. So if you take most of the beats I've done, the, 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 so I've done beats with uh, practically five instruments and they're still dope. So my own take as a producer and then my own little advice I will have for um, um, artists or and maybe let me just say producers who want to really be good on their craft is like uh, beat making is something you you do consistently before you become good at it. You, you cannot be doing beats and then you stay for a long while and then you come back, you do like a couple of beats, you stay for a long while. It's like any other thing. When you do anything consistently, you'll be good at it because I've been doing this for a very long time. I'm not even going into that right now because the session is not about how I started making beats. It's about how I made this beat. And I think I've showed you how I made the beat. I hope you all enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And then wait for the EP it's dropping on the 18th of December 2020. I hope you all go stream the EP and then listen, share to your friends. Bye if you want to support us. We really appreciate it. And then about other things, I might, let me just put it out here. I might start dropping tutorials on making beats on my YouTube channel. So watch out for it. Peace. Talk about Cameroon and
you being incorporating your style to Cameroon music? Okay. And then uh, there's there's something a lot of people, some people uh, try to uh, always uh, say, like a lot of people say my beats, some of them sound American or Western, but for me it's not about American or Western. I still incorporate African things into my into my beats a lot of times. Like most precautions, I'm actually at a conga in a trap beat, but some people don't actually some people don't actually see that. But one thing about beats is like what you are going for. You make beats for a particular purpose. When I'm making a beat, I want the beat to actually speak for itself. What do I want from the beat? Crazy. What do I want from the beat? An African feeling like it should bring you back home. Or I want to bring out a feeling like should the beat actually bring you to a point where you can cry or say, like, actually speak or speak something on the beat that can actually make people cry. The kind of vibe, any beat I make reflects, if you listen to the beat, and ask me what I was feeling when I was making the beat, I will tell you. And I've made thousands of beats and I know every single beat I've made. So when it comes to incorporating African feelings into beats, I do that sometimes on purpose. Sometimes I don't, depending on what an artist wants. I don't try to force too much to go out of the box. Uh, because some people, uh, some people want to do something too abstract before they can accept that it is theirs. But most discoveries uh, come when you see a loophole somewhere and you are trying to feel. Not that you don't need to try too hard to to do something. For me, I think less is more. So what what I do in my beat is like every beat I make, I try to bring in some little bit of creativity. That's my own part of uh, the beat and I am an African if I'm thinking like I should add something to this beat that is actually from my heart for my own creativeness I think to me that's African because I'm from Africa and concerning other beats I do a couple a couple of beats I do beats I do beats a lot of beats from dancehall to Afro I've done gospel beats as well Afro pop trap beats hip hop and many more others, but I'm popularly known for trap music, but that's not just the music, the kind of music I do. I do a lot of songs. I do a lot of songs for people. But in general, I just love good music. And I love doing beats, like from the onset. I've been doing beats for more than seven years today. So it's not something that I actually just started doing maybe a couple of days. I okay, do you, yeah. about trap beats in Cameroon, how do you see, because we know how people see, we know how other musical genres, what do you think about trap beats in Cameroon and how do you see it in the next five years? First of all, trap music, trap music is, uh, how can I say, it's like trash rap, but nowadays it's getting grounds and then a lot of young people are into trap music, especially in Cameroon. Because one thing I understood is like people, 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 people actually vibe to trap songs coming from the West, from the West, than when somebody does it here. And I understood that that's just how the world is. When they, when people identify with you, well, when people identify with you, they are actually going to to vibe with you. You, it's just the same like if an American comes here and then uh, he or she is trying to sing in the dialect and then you can identify that he is not, like you can listen to the audio and then identify that he is not an African. That's where the problem comes from. If you are doing trap music and you are doing it so good that somebody can listen to the audio and then don't feel like, don't judge like this is coming from this place is coming from this place. Like you, you do trap music in a way that trap music is supposed to be done. Though there are no rules to things, but I just want to speak on a general perspective. Like if I can listen to your song and then I feel it and then I don't have to say anything like, well, I can feel a little bit of laughs here. Why is it like, 
I just enjoy the song. To me, it's a dope thing. And people have been doing that. I've listened to songs, trap songs from Cameroon. And they're so good. Music is music in the first place. It, it depends on like what you feel more. If somebody who, are, who grew up listening to, to uh, trap music and hip-hop music will easily be doing trap music and hip-hop music. The world is really small nowadays, nowadays because of the the world is small nowadays because of the internet. It's actually available for everybody. So you can be in your house and become whatever you want to be. And about trap music in Cameroon, young people nowadays listen to trap music more than because see, more than a lot of other genre, genre of music. So and it has a, a big market. I, I I don't know how I can actually put this out. But I I do more trap beats because I think I have a bigger market where I can actually put out my trap beats too. And then the reason why I do Afro pop and other genres that are actually um, more African is because I am an African. I'm from Cameroon and I cannot actually just forget about where I come from. I grew up listening to all sorts of music from traditional to everything. So it still has an like it has an impact on impact on what I'm doing when it comes to Afro beats. And trap beats to me. I've I started doing beats with trap I started doing trap beats. When I started making beats I was making trap beats. And one of the reasons why reasons why I was making trap beats is because I love trap music from the onset I've been listening to hip hop and R and B from way back. That like do, that's the that's the music that influenced me. I won't lie to anybody. That's the kind of music that influenced me. So it was just obvious for me to start making beats, and then I go straight into making those kind of beats that I enjoy listening to. And when I actually started making beats and I was doing trap beats. I went online. I taught myself how to make the beats. To make beats. Uh, I, 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 I just went to YouTube and then searched on how to make beats, and then downloaded a couple of videos and then started watching and then uh, doing, doing what I was seeing there. And one thing I noticed is that there, are, it, like the tutorial videos, to every 100 trap beat tutorial videos. They might be just like two Afrobeat tutorial videos. So it's easy for you to, l to learn trap beats because there's, there's a lot of material on it. If you are learning how to do beats on your own, than Afrobeat. Africans don't really put out much on the internet when it comes to teaching people how to make beats. I, 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 I'm, not, I, I'm not saying that I'm very guilty of that as well because I've been producing for years and I've not been able to do a tutorial beat to put it on YouTube for people to actually learn. But that's what I'm actually working on recently. I need to actually be putting out tutorials on YouTube for people to learn how to make beats because I learned how to make beats only on YouTube exclusively. Okay, so Jay, mm -hmm. you made mention of the fact that you draw inspiration from the music growing up, you listen more to mm -hmm. Aaron. What are the names, those names that really made you choose this part of Music production. <sighs> Let me just say, I, I yeah, I'm, I was born in the '90s, so so I grew up listening to rap music from Tupac. And let me when I when I was around secondary school, Chris Brown came up, and then his songs were always dope. Akon, a lot of people, Akon is one of them, but from Africa, Akon, Chris Brown, DJ Khaled, Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne is one of the people that actually inspired me. Rick Rose, Drake, those are a couple of artists that really, that really actually m m made me to, to, to fall deeply for the kind of music I do, I do today. But coming to Cameroon artists, I we used to listen to Kotoba, Sanfan, Thomas. I I listen. Uh, I don't really know if I can name all of them here, but I, li I listened to Makosa a lot when I was growing up. I love Makosa, and then one thing I love about Makosa is mostly the guitars, the bass line, and the solo, the solo guitars. Like it's some, always something else. So I used to listen to Koto Bass. One of my best artists, Sanfan Thomas, Dinabel. 
and listen to him as well. Um, uh, you have uh, people like um, Baby Manga love her songs as well. But when it comes to trap music and the music that I do, the people that influence me, as I say, Leo Wayne, Chris Brown, Brick Rose, and Drake, and, and like they've actually influenced me a lot. Okay, Jay. Mm -hmm. You know that upcoming. What do you have to say to the upcoming like aspiring young youth who want to follow the path of music production? Like from your experiences, what do you think you can tell them that might change or maybe give them that push to keep moving? Well, for young aspiring producers, I I I still say one thing: if you like what you are doing and you wish to succeed in it. You have to be doing it every day. I mean, like every single opportunity you have, do it. And then there's another thing: uh, young producers nowadays they feel like for you to be able to be a dope producer, you must be under a producer. You must, yeah. It's good to have a mentor, but at a certain point, for me, when you tell me that you want to make want to be making beats and you you pull up you pull if you pull up and tell me that you want to start making beats I and you want me to start m maybe giving you uh, tutorials and stuff like that I won't say anything because somebody who really wants to make beats will pull up with a computer with a digital audio workstation inside already and the person must have started doing the beats himself that shows how serious you are you are there's everything in the internet let me speak to people who really want to be dope with beats there's everything on the internet you have everything there if you want how do i learn how to do things i might get stuck doing a bit and i just google search about it and it gives me a, like a pile of information for me to choose from but there's another thing again people trying to tell you which beats will sell which ones will not sell just do beats do beats how you feel and then they always say you you should try to be unique in your way of beats there are different ways to become unique that's the like being dope can just be a unique yeah, like maybe your uniqueness is being too dope but you have to actually to be unique it's just like you can you you you, you cannot create your own language if you don't know how to speak uh, different languages so learn how to be very creative with beat making like before you start trying to experiment to create your own your own uh, type of beat that people can identify uh, you with from the basics don't skip the basics that's one thing always learn always try to practice work at least let me just say at least five hours a day if you want to be a good beat maker hours let me say from 2014, 15, 16, I was like spending at least eight hours on my computer every day making beats. Eight hours. And then after the eight hours, I might spend around four hours watching video. So you see the kind of the kind of time I've put into this beat making. If you don't put in that kind of time, that amount of time you 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 will be good but you will not be dope there's there's hung if you want to be a good producer you have to have the like you're supposed to have the hunger in you you don't become a dope producer by just being ordinary and then doing everything that everybody does you have to have sacrifices you have to sacrifice something to be good so the time people are spending outside drinking you should be inside the house making beats when people are outside playing you should be inside the house making beats half half a dream you are moving towards be focused then you'll be a dope beat maker. That's all I can say. Hmm. Okay, Jay, we don't have the big names in Cameroon. Are there any artists in Cameroon you would like to work with for your having projects with that are ongoing? That's not... Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm allowed to say some things, but I, I will not call people's names and projects that are ongoing. But uh, for me, I've, I, I don't know if... If... Um, some producers think like me. I, I've always liked working with upcoming artists. Yeah, artists that are still on the ground. 
because there's always is, is, is the joy you feel from from like seeing an artist blow up when you have uh, like a hand in it is different you can yeah you can do a bit and send to an established artist and then the song is a hit it's good very good but it's different when you actually do a bit for somebody who is not known and he gets known and he becomes a star from what you did to them that's a whole different feeling and that's the feeling i want to have so most of the time like people send beats to established artists i don't know i don't know i prefer to work beats and keep and then i see somebody around the cartier who is struggling to be to be an artist and then i i, I he is good and I see that he is good and I give the beat to, to him or her to record on. Because a lot of times, even when you send beats to, to the established artists, it's still up to them to choose if they will use them or not. So, uh, that, than wasting time to, 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 to do that, just just work with the people that are around you. That's the only way you can empower yourself and make yourself great. I, I did not become like, a few people know me. A uh, few people know me and they don't know me from maybe some big names. They know me from the people I've been working with and there, the people who have been around me. I don't need to go very far to work with an artist. I work with anybody that is around me. I work with them. Like most of the people I work with are like my friends. So it's it's it's, it's more than just music. Okay, Jay, you made mention of upcoming projects. You said you're releasing an EP. Can we just get, just tell us something about the EP? What is okay. coming up? The EP, I did a joint EP with um, Skynet and Crowns. Like, there are two dope rappers, like young dope rappers coming up. And I've actually been producing the songs for a while. So we decided to do a joint EP. The EP talks about just the come up the hustle and the come up what we believe in is like how can i say grinding independently when i say actually making music independently and then selling the music or giving the, out the, putting out the music independently is the, the the whole ep is about independent hustle it's like the hustle tree because I bought independent hustle and then what we wanted to actually showcase there is like um everybody can make it like you can make it wherever you are. You don't need to go out of here to to be able to do the kind of music we we, we are doing. Because the the E P the E P I I I've played it to some people and then I got reviews like okay it's it's Western and the well, music is music. You can sit in your house and blow up in another country without even knowing. And that's what people should understand. Like good music is good music. We sit here and we listen to music from people we have never seen. Maybe you are just scrolling to your streaming app and then you get a song and you like. You don't even know the person. That's music. You don't need to know somebody to enjoy their music. That's what people don't understand. So we did the songs and most of the songs are more motivational songs. Talk, talking about how you shouldn't stop whatever you're doing. You should stay focused on your grind and then um, don't give up in anything you're doing yet. Because the only thing the only thing that can actually be bad is when you give up on life. Yeah, that's when suicidal thoughts keep coming in. The EP, the EP has six songs. And all the songs are produced by me. Then there are two tracks in it. And the tracks feature uh, most tracks. He's a rapper. Anyway, you people know him after the EP drop. And then you have D-Bless. He's also a rapper and a singer. So, you have most tags and the bless on the EP, but it's an it's a joint EP. M me, Skynet, and Crowns. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Any last words before you tell us goodbye? Mm, last words. Well, I don't know how I can actually end this uh, 
small how can i even call it it's an inter it's not an interview it's just like this the, the, the session the session the way i can end this session the only thing i can tell people is like whatever you are doing as a music producer have a dream have a focus don't it's not like don't don't let anybody distract you and then understand that some while some people can make it very quick in life everything is a process and don't expect to just blow up in a day that's that's a mistake people do don't expect to blow up in a day keep doing whatever you're doing consistently consistently you you like the way you become great will be on like you, you will be unmeasurable so uh, if you are doing something and then you are putting it out today and it's not moving don't stop keep doing it you you alone know know your dreams and then your 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 what you want to achieve the only thing that stop us is like we will we 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 actually derail from our line of my focus and then we, we we get different things distract us so what i would say to all producers or all upcoming producers is like stay focused and don't give up keep doing what you are doing it will obviously pay you someday thank you very much peace 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 peace, peace. <laughs>